All right, well, let's talk a little bit about statistical reasoning. I know that sounds extremely drab and extremely boring, except that, for the most part, um, there's something to be said for understanding statistics. Now, some of the most basic ones, like percentages or ratios or um, uh, just something as simple as a sum, are all part of what we might refer to as descriptive statistics. And so in order to process the information that's coming at you, if you will, in the world is usually summarized by statistics. The one thing I want you to keep in mind is that by their very nature, statistics, um, statistics summarize, which means that when we use statistics, we also lose data. When you look at a list of numbers, you're looking at the raw data. When you take those numbers and summarize them or put them, uh, make them into a sum, you've just lost the individual items, the individual data points. So summarization, while good, and needed in order to help us understand, um, it also, by its very nature, tends to, to lose something in the process. So that's something to keep in mind when we're talking about it. That whenever you hear big, round, uh, undocumented numbers, you, uh, question marks should come into your head. Uh, people will talk about a percentage. A good example is that a lot of times what you hear is that 10% of our population are gay or lesbian. The reality is, is that in the actual national surveys, it's more in the percentage range of 2 to 3%, which means that, that we're, we're talking about 300,000 people uh, uh, or 3 million people uh, or 30 million people, where the roughly the, the uh, um, uh, population data for the United States is around 300 million. If it's 10%, then we're talking about 30 million people. If it's 30% or 3%, I should say, then we're talking about 10 million people. And that number really drops considerably. And so when you hear data like that, you have to be somewhat um, skeptical when you listen to it. The thing to keep in mind is that uh, being literate, uh, literate with statistics is useful, um, is very useful, and it's worth your while, oh gosh, here I go again with my spelling, statistics, um, literate with statistics uh, makes you a more informed consumer. And a lot of times, people are not terribly informed with st statistics. And therefore, when they hear uh, something that is 10% fat, uh, they think that that's a lot versus 90% lean. That's a good example. So we're after not only being informed consumers of general things, but also informed consumers of scientific data. All right, so um, one of the first things that is part of describing data uh, is the idea of um, central tendency. And most of you probably are familiar with uh, one of the m ones that people are probably the most familiar with is uh, the mean or the average. And that simply is taking a number of data points and essentially, um, or average, it's taking a number of data points and then dividing it by the actual uh, adding them uh, and it, which oftentimes is, is the sigma taking the number and dividing it by the actual number of data points data points and essentially we find out the um, the 
mean, the average. In other words, we can have outliers. We can have one on the very low side, one on the very high side. And generally, with averages and means, we can figure out about what is the average score of, of uh, any number of data points. The second one is median. And essentially, we're, we're taking um, uh, a number of data points two, three, four, five, six, seven. And in this case, the four is a median. If you have an even number of numbers, and uh, so we do one, two, three, four, five, and six, then we technically don't have a middle point which means that essentially to determine what the median is, we take these two numbers and divide them by the number of numbers and we find what that number is, which would be 3.5. That becomes your median. The thing about a median is that it is less influenced by the outliers. The, the one and the seven have a far less influence than they do in the average. Um, so it tends to be more stable. Uh, and less m movement with it. An average can be very much influenced by these outlier numbers here. And so median tends to be a pretty stable measure of middle point. Um, and that's essentially what it is, is a middle point. The last one uh, of central tendency is just what we refer to as the mode. And the mode uh, simply is the most occurring number of items. So if I have a one, two, 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 these are my data points, three, four, four, five, six, and seven, what would be my mode? Well, the mode would be two because that's the highest number of reoccurring data points. If you were to actually diagram it in a frequency chart, you would have only one, only one of three, uh, two of four, one of five, one of six, one of seven, and two, which would mean that when you're actually looking at the actual frequency chart, uh, and you have one up here, two, and three, uh, you would have how many points here that are only really one, and that would be that one. And then the number of points that are two would be your four. And the number of points that would be four or three would be your uh, two. And that's how a frequency chart uh, shows us the mode, uh, the number of items that occur at a recurring rate. And that's the essentially the most frequently occurring score or scores. Each one of these, the mean, the median, and the mode are all measures of central tendency. In other words, where things happen in the central part of the normal curve. And that's what we refer to as central tendency. Um, some are more um, volatile. Uh, average would be more volatile uh, than some that are very stable just simply because they're the middle point of the scores. And that's what we refer to as central tendency. The next item we're going to turn our attention to is variation. So we're not only do looking at what's the middle points in a variety of data points, but we're looking at how much they vary from one another. Now let's look at that. 